today's program. We are truly in for a treat with today's Happy Empowerment Hour. Vince and I both have a very, a new friend to me, a dear friend to Vince, Alan Luna. And Alan is somebody you're going to learn so much about. I'm very proud to say que es Mexicano también, a Mexican American, and he has accomplished so much in his career. He's worked with everyone from Netflix to Amazon to HBO, and, and is really always looking for the next I. And as a casting director, I am privileged that he's here with us today because he's going to give us the inside knowledge on what a talent needs to know to be noticed because in today's day and age we're all doing hollywood differently we're all focusing within ourselves y qué más orgullo de tener alguien que también es latino a estar aquí con nosotros thank you so much alan we appreciate you being here with us and sharing your knowledge absolutely absolutely and i just want to say you know um alan um Alan comes from a very well-known office here, Carla Hul, who has yeah. casted shows like Entify, Narcos Mexico. Uh, and I'm going to plug this one because this was our, our our baby on the line with Dennis Quaid. That office did casting for that, that uh, put two of our clients in there, which was Jimmy Gonzalez and Miguel Angel Garcia. So yeah, that office is amazing. And I think you guys are in for a treat because... Um, yeah, this office does a lot of good casting and Alan and I spoke to Alan last week. He has a lot of great information for you guys, especially you guys that are wanting to know what's the future in casting, the new norm in Hollywood. He has all those answers. So I hope you have a pad and start writing because this is going to be very good information for you guys. And Alan, thank you for joining us. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for having me. I'm, I honestly feel honored and I think what you guys are doing is incredible. You guys are empowering and uplifting the Latino community, which is exactly the type of energy that we need right now. You know, we're kind of going, we're all going through the same, the same issue, this, this international pandemic. But not only that, you know, we've also, we are an underrepresented uh, group. In, in Hollywood and in this country. And I think um, that changes with people like you guys. So, so thank you guys, I really appreciate it. Well, thank you, Alan, and thank you for acknowledging that. But I will tell you this, it all starts with having people on the inside making a difference happen. So thank you and Carla, because I think what you all are doing um, really uh, provides an avenue of our great talent being able to be showcased. So on that note, what is a piece of advice that you would give a talent right now on how to best prepare to see someone like yourself before they, because as we all know, self tapes are gonna be a little different now. So what advice would you give somebody? So uh, you're talking about like preparing um, for like an audition? Yes, for an audition, sorry. Yeah, so I think, I think really preparing for every single person, everyone has their own way of preparing. And this is something that each individual will have to learn and figure it out, you know, their own way, like what works and what doesn't. Like, I think there is no right or wrong answer here, but right. I just think it's extremely important more than anything um, to be completely off book when you have an audition. When you have an audition, sometimes you can get a two page scene as your audition. And there are times I've seen this where you have a 13 page audition. Normally an audition um, like per page is about a minute of reading. And so that can be very, very overwhelming when you have like 10 pages. So. Um, I know that it's very difficult and I think we ask for so much sometimes from actor, for our actors, but you know, you are very appreciated mm -hmm. for, for your work and for your talent. Um, one thing that I know um, my friend who acts on Broadway says she likes to do is read her scene um, one, one word at a time and then start over. So which, one of the things that she does that, I, that I've seen is very effective is like if the scene starts with like, I want to eat at you know the taqueria right. she she would then read it i i want i want to i want to eat i want to eat at i want to eat at the i want to eat at the taqueria so this is like some sort of repetitive like brain psychology psychological tactic that works for her and she yeah. does like 200 page plays and she does that with her plays that's one really cool um tactic that i know has really worked because i've passed that on to other actors and they're like whoa that was great um so whatever works for you um you know i think each person will will definitely get it but you look so prepared if you are off book mm -hmm. so there's this thing that i think sometimes um actors tend to do um i'm trying to look at, to see if i have a piece of paper but i don't but they'll sometimes do an audition with their paper on hand and that just doesn't look prepared at all it just it looks like 
you know, it's, it's kind of a thing that anyone can do. Anyone can do that. I can do that. Um, but being able to like get into that character and hone in who that individual is and place it all up here, just eliminate the papers. It really makes you feel grounded. It really makes you feel real. And I'm sure as well as the casting director it makes you feel that the talent took the, I guess you would say the pride in preparing a little bit further and to separate themselves on that note. I know that when we were talking previously, we talked about casting etiquette mm. because I think mm -hmm. sometimes we don't always know all the fundamentals that we should know, whether it is in person or right now virtually. What are some of the etiquette lessons that you feel we could share with the audience? That way they can be better prepared to see someone like yourself in the future. And, 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 it, and you know what, Alan, I want you to touch upon also, especially in LA because of the traffic. And I, I always tell my clients, get there five ten minutes ahead because you can be in traffic and it can get you late you want to get in your environment so if you can touch on that especially for the la actors because traffic can sometimes just ruin your audition you know if you're coming in late you're flustered you're sweating yeah. you're exhausted and you walk in there and it's like boom so yeah you can touch on that for the la people i think that would be amazing so there's a couple of things here um i think i think you're really spot on i think you know la traffic right now is not as bad as it was three months ago, but it's gonna get worse. It's gonna get worse soon. Um, so I, I've heard of instances where uh, actors, sometimes it takes two hours to get to an audition. During that time, you know, they're driving and they're kind of all over the place and, and it's it can be a little bit much. So I think being on time is extremely important, but also keep in mind, there are a bunch of actors as well that are reading for the same role. Um, and sometimes we're running behind. Um, so. You know, it, it's 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 kind of a very interesting situation. But if you're there 15 minutes early, 10 minutes early, um, it would be helpful for yourself because of the fact that you don't have to worry about, you know, getting there or whatever. Um, whenever here's one thing, here's one thing that I that I think maybe gets a little bit like misconstrued. So if someone's running late to an audition, it happens very often, very often. Don't be afraid to call your agent, to call your manager and say, hey, I'm running late and I'm terrified right now. I'm running 10 minutes late. Your manager has relationships. Your agent has relationships with the casting team. They, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they've been in this game forever. They know, they know how it goes. And I don't think you need to like kill yourself for being late, but it's ideal to be early. Mm -hmm. um, but if that is the case, a simple call to your, to your representation, to your manager, will lead to them calling us and then telling us, hey, I'm so sorry, she, he is running 10 minutes late, 15 minutes late. Is that okay? Of course it's okay. Yeah, we mm -hmm. really want to see them. So remember, we're like, we're on your team here and we want you to, we want you to succeed because your success means our success. Mm -hmm. um, so don't be afraid of that. We're, we're like, that's, that's a big thing that I want everyone to like ingrain, like just remember forever. We are on your team. We're teammates here and we want you to succeed. So don't be afraid of that. I think that's a really, really, really important thing. But yeah, just try to be a little early because one of the things also that you can do when you get in there maybe 10 minutes early or so, um, we can get you out of there 10 minutes early. You know, if we're if we're running in a good pace, you getting there early means you leaving early and you can go on, you know, go on with the rest of your day. We know how much of your day is being taken by driving across town to being into our, you know, to coming into our office. So we really appreciate you. But um, when you're early, you can also prepare a little bit more as well. Um, most times casting offices uh, provide additional sides, additional um, additional scenes that you're going to be reading in our office. So they're already there and it doesn't and it's, you know, I think one I think one of the things that, that actors really do when they're prepared is they come with their sides just in case. But remember, you don't want to be holding it in an audition. You want it to be right here. Um, but we always have one ready to roll, like in our coffee table or something, so that you can always reference it in case you're, you're, you're forgetting something. If there are none, it's OK to ask whatever, you know, if an assistant or an associate is there, it's OK to ask, hey, I'm sorry, I forgot my, um, my sides. Is there any way that you have an extra copy of it? That's totally OK. Keep in mind, we are on the same team here and we want you to succeed. Um, as long as you do it very respectfully and you're very nice to us, you know what I mean? Um, so, that's all, so that's it. I think, um, you know, the process uh, consists of, I mean, there's a lot of things to consider, but when you come into our office as well, um, it's, it's, it's important um, that 
you you know you're you're in it you're fully in it that's the most important thing your audition your audition is the most important thing we don't care as much we don't really care that much what you're wearing we don't really care you know like how you look compared to your to your um to your uh, your photos your your headshots i mean hopefully you know they're not too touched up that's a big thing actors tend to sometimes choose photos that are so touched up it doesn't really look like them the more natural the better um but yeah what matters is your performance and just focus on your performance um we really like it when you don't wear too much cologne when you don't wear too much perfume <laughs> um we really do like that just because we're in a very small compact space that is sometimes very yeah. soundproof so we you know we're really tight it's not insulated there are no windows sometimes for um, so uh yeah try not to wear so much cologne and perfume because that smell will linger there for an hour or two <laughs> <laughs> um and it's kind of, it's kind of a bit like, one that way <laughs> yeah, yeah um you know it's it's don't um i just think like you know, being being a little being a little bit more natural as possible is the best is the best way to, to go about it you know don't don't worry about wearing too much makeup you know the camera is like the camera is only capturing you from like here to here so we see everything uh, and like too much makeup sometimes is like, ah, what are you doing? Oh, you. Um, and then no props. Um, really, really try not to bring any props. Uh, we were touching, uh, we were touching base on this a little while ago. We were talking about this about how sometimes um, wearing, I mean, uh, bringing props takes away from the audition, from right. the audition, and it can be a little bit too like gimmicky. Like um, if the scene says that we're, we're that we have like a cell phone, um, now I'm gonna pull out my cell phone, and sometimes it can be nice if you do it right, but most times it's it's best to just not have any props at all including in your self tapes this is also consider everything in, you know for your self tapes as well um because right now let's say the scene the scene uh, that you're auditioning for uh says that you have a cell phone in hand and you're like this you know it's like okay hey how's it going hello yes vince vince it's a pleasure to talk to you how are you right what happened there i am like this i could barely see your face we want to see you. We want to see. We, we want to see this. We want to see how you hone hone in on this character. Um, so it just takes away from you. Um, those are just some 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 minor things that 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 can add up and just to consider. And I have a question for you because you touched upon a little bit about that, but mm -hmm. self tapes because that's our new normal right yeah. now, um, and that's how talent is being submitted. How could a talent really fix their space? So that way they're not making any faux pas and hopefully you'll take seriously beyond their acting, of course, because we know that's yeah. But what about the environment? What should that look like on a self tape? For sure. For sure. So one thing, one thing, you know, and I know this is going to be uh, people are going to people are going to be really mad at me for saying this. You don't have to go spend money on booking an audition room i mean booking booking a space and spending money that's one of the things that i'm just like you don't need to do that i'm pretty sure you can you can do this at home and you should have this set up at home anyway because it'll save you money exactly it'll save you a ton of money um and i you know and i also i mean i have friends that have these types of rooms where they charge actors a few bucks to come in and do their audition it's only a few bucks it's cheap you know for one but when you do it 100 times in a year it's like whoa it adds up a lot um and i know they're gonna be mad at me for saying this but you know try to really uh maximize the space that you have um and master self tapes because that is going to be the new normal that is going to be the future that is extremely important for us right now is to master self tapes um all of the we so our office right now is casting a, a feature film everything is via self tapes i'm casting um a short film with um with some people from dreamworks everything is via self tapes um so it's important to really master it and i think one of the things that's very important is that your background is not like mine your background should be <laughs> one like just one solid background color right. um that's it one background uh one background uh solid color um try to have very very little to zero noise in the background as well so no noise whatsoever um if you can i know that everyone has a different living situation um so if you can't remember we are on your team as long as your acting is good we're not going to it's it's not going to matter it's not going to make or break your audition but it just enhances it and make it just I, looks better um i think um you always want to have it framed where you have just like less than an inch of headspace on top mm -hmm. um you know you don't want your audition your self-tape audition to look like this right it just, it's just like you know i it doesn't work it doesn't yeah. work at all um so you wanted to you wanted to um have your frame from like your 
where your chest begins in the bottom to the top of your head you want you ideally would like to be maybe on one of the thirds of your like in a left third or a right third of your camera right and looking opposite of where of where you of the opposite side of where where you're standing so right here i'm in the middle and right here now i'm like this in this third and i'm going to be i'm going to be looking there um another thing that's very important is whoever your roommates are whoever your family members are that you live with try to have them master read af uh, opposite of you so one of the big things that's very important is to have a reader in your audition um unless it's a monologue and you will never need a reader um but Readers are very important in an audition. Um, casting offices a lot of the times provide readers or the or the casting um, professional will provide, I mean, be the reader themselves. Um, we like to always have a reader that we hire to come on and, and help us out only because for me, if I'm operating the camera and I'm reading the sides also, and I'm looking for certain things to for them to do, the certain beats, the certain like, to find a comedy naturally in the script. That's what I want to see. So I don't really want to read the lines and then look right. at them and go like that. So that's one big thing for me. So we always get readers, but we also get really good readers that are really good at reading opposite of you. Right. Um, so I think it's very important to have a reader that is vibing off you, that you have some chemistry and some camaraderie with. That's the extremely- The member that wants to work with you is what you're yeah. trying to say. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And I know- I know this again? <laughs> and I know it's a little bit difficult, but remember the scene that you have is a scene in your audition is a scene that is a real conversation in the script. So this yeah. is gonna actually happen in a movie. Now your reader should not be so dramatic and theater, but right. <laughs> also not, they should also not be reading like, I want to go eat tacos. They should be sounding like, hey, do you want to go eat tacos? And then you're like saying your, your piece. So they need to sound natural in the way that they talk. Um, Cause they can just like take away also from, from your audition and ruin your vibe too. Like yeah. you get affected by that person. Um, so yeah. No, and I was going to tell you, we were asked another question. Alex Castillo wanted to ask if you could please talk about the process from casting, from submissions to the mm -hmm. producers, just so actors understand the role and how that is happening now um, with today. So if you don't mind maybe going on to that, I think that kind of really plays off of the question that you just you know answered as well. Yeah, I think that's a good, uh, that's a great question. And what you're asking right now is for like some behind the scenes casting, right. um, like, you know, uh, operations. And I think that's something that a lot of people sometimes don't really know. Um, you know, people sometimes, and sometimes I forget that too. Like I have a lot of actor friends and I have a lot of producer friends, but they're not casting directors. They're not casting professionals. So I'm like, how do you not know this? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I've been doing this for almost a decade. Uh, okay. this is what it is. Um, so, you know, when it's always a little bit different, sometimes you have a situation where you have a television show, a feature film or whatever that we're casting and the producers want a celebrity attached. So mm -hmm. sometimes we we just create lists of people that are like an offer only type of actor and we offer them the job and they say yes or no and then negotiations start if they say yes or no then we go to the next person that we like and we just do that until we get one of the people that we like if that doesn't that happens but it doesn't happen you know for everything mm -hmm. so there are a lot there's there's so many roles guys there are so many roles um, and yes, there are a lot of actors, but there are so many roles that you can go out for. So what happens is we post a casting call, um, sometimes just locally, wherever they're shooting the production or uh, domestically, nationwide or internationally as well. Um, and we wait, usually I like to wait a few days for me to finally select the actors to come in and audition. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things that I that I really like to look at is um, an actor's um, uh, first, the first thing that we see is their headshots, right? Like right. Let's see what this person is like, if this person is a, if the character, let's say the, the, the character is called um, Tomas, right? So right. Tomas is a funny, silly, goofy person, 22 to 28 years old, um, Latino, right? So now we have like hundreds of submissions from agents and managers or from actors um, that submit a talent. Um, and I'm looking at headshots. I'm looking at resumes. I'm seeing, okay, this guy, this character is a comedy actor. So who has, who, who has credits in that? Or, and if they don't have credits in, in that space of comedy, um, let me look at their reel. Let me see if their reel, 
um, can see that they have um, the ability to play this type of character, this type of, of you know, funny, silly, goofy kid. Um, or what kind of training, you know? You know, one of the things that I really like is seeing people that have trained at UCB or Groundlings um, mm -hmm. or Second City, all That's the big uh, improv, the improv, um, the improv schools are incredible. They're so good for you and they teach you so much. They put you in a place where you would never be had you not been, uh, you know in this school because they just teach you how to be outside of your comfort zone right um and also being funny they teach you how to be funny too you know sometimes people just have it inherently um but it's it, it, they definitely teach you so we look at your your body of work we look at your reel we look at your headshots what does this person look like okay i can see tomas being played by this guy i can see tomas being played by vince vince is gonna come in um so then we send our auditions um schedules for the next uh however so one of the things that i also like to do is so it takes a little bit of a it takes a little while sometimes right so we just selected let's say 40 actors that were submitted and let's sometimes a thousand three thousand one two or three thousand actors are submitted but we select a very small number sometimes because it is a lot of work for us um so we finally start scheduling our actors and based on the material i like to give actors maybe three or four days to uh fully prepare and memorize their their lines i'm just like i know i know it's a little crazy sometimes people are like dude you should bring them in the next day or you should bring them in two days we shoot however many days but i'm like i really want the actors to succeed i really want them to prepare i really wanted to like you know get it in their head so i like to give actors four days or so three or four days to really memorize their lines and then finally when they come in or the self-tapes come in because that's future right now exactly. um we start we start filtering through the auditions um and we see who really who we think really is worthy of portraying and properly properly portraying this character um our process consists of let's say 40 people right we read 40 mm -hmm. people in person or via self-tapes then what i do is I select my favorite that I know I believe can play this 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 character. Sometimes it can be thirty. Sometimes it could be five. You know, so it's it kind of just depends with every character. It's a little bit different. And I know also what the producers are looking for because the producers and the filmmakers and um, the directors, all of them, and casting always have a creative call and like a concept call prior to casting even starting. So remember, we know what they're looking for because they've told us. The kind of the aesthetic they're looking for, the vibe they're looking for, the charisma, or whatever it is that they're looking for, we know because we have these conversations with them. So it's also okay where um, you can ask your 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 agent or your manager um, if they had had if they have had conversations with the casting team about what they're looking for specifically. Ask them for those notes. But sometimes your representation would already give you those notes, right. or the casting team hopefully give you gave you those notes in the in the uh, the audition. Um, request yeah um so yeah well, i'm laughing i'm sure vince is going yes and we said it in an email it's already there all yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll put out perfectly for them it's just <laughs> for me to all the way to the end of the email to see it right to, yeah. to the notes there. vince is awesome vince is definitely yeah. yeah he always i mean we've we worked on a previous project where a couple of his clients read for a disney project that we were working on um before all this went down and yeah i mean i just yeah, he, he, he's awesome. Um, but so then finally we go to producers. We're like, producers, these are our favorites. And they're like, okay, we like these guys. So now we just sent, let's say, 10 out of the 40. And they're like, we like these five. So it's just slowly decreasing and decreasing and decreasing. It's a really fun process. It's really amazing. And you really want to succeed. You really want, we really want you guys to succeed because your success means our success. We look good. We look so good when we can send so many people to them. Right. Um, and then um, sometimes the 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 act, depending on the type of role that it is, whether it's a series regular, where it's whether it's a lead on a film or whatever, the represent uh, the producers would say, okay, let's make an offer on this person. Here are the numbers, or they'll say, let's do a callback. Let's right. bring them in. We want to be in the room with you guys, and let's all work together, and let's all collaborate on bringing this person in um, and seeing them take direction in the room. So now let's select these five people to see how they can really take direction to see how they can take notes and to see them perform this this character we wrote and that we envisioned um so during the process of hentified marvin lemus um and linda uh oh my god the the writers of, of hentified yeah. seeing seeing them in the room give notes was one of the most beautiful things i've ever seen in my oh. life i mean they I just, they knew what they wanted and they got it out of their actors so be prepared for that as well. You're about to get something thrown at you. 
the executive producer of Selena, you know what they do? They do some. They do something really fun. Um, for Selena, in our callback process, they would they the actor would do their interpretation, and then they'll say, "Okay, now do the opposite of that. That funny scene. Now do it sad." So right here in this line, this is where now your whole world has shifted, and now you're no longer happy. And they're, the actors are like, "Holy crap!" <laughs> They actors just want like, to yeah. yeah. And actors like to play. We're playing with you guys. Remember, we're having fun. We're playing with you guys, and we want you to succeed. So let's see what you got. Come on, boom, right. boom. Um, it's a little so bit of a boxing match as you were doing that. Yeah, great. in a good great. way. Yeah, and then and then from there, maybe they make their selections, or if they felt like no one was right, then we'll redo the whole process for that for that character. Um, but it doesn't happen that often. No doubt. Well, also one of the things that we talked about earlier, and I know right now you talked about the callback process and has that changed and what is, what's changed with that process with where we are right now? Um, yeah, is, for sure. What are you seeing? So now we're, we're in the middle of May, right? Oh. We're a, a few, almost two to, two to three months into this pandemic and things are not going back to normal. Right. um anytime soon we don't really see this going back to normal anytime soon and you know i was telling um vince and Lila of, uh, of just a few minutes ago that we were um i wasn't i was having a conversation with with uh the casting team of veep and and kirby enthusiasm and an executive at sony a few weeks ago and we were like how are we going to how is it how, like how are we going to move forward with casting in the future right well mm -hmm. i think self-tapes are going to be the new norm Self-tapes are always going to be the new norm, so that's why we really wanted to emphasize on mastering self-tapes and mastering self-tape techniques. Um, but callbacks are going to be very different too. I think um, for a callback, I have a callback this Saturday with um, with my uh, my team with DreamWorks and Warner Brothers um, and our lead for a short film that we're doing. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a Zoom live face-to-face -face with our actors that we love. It's six actors down from like 110 that initially auditioned. Um, so we're get we're close. We're very close. Um, but I think that's what it's going to be like for the time being right now. But mm -hmm. I think once once the restrictions on um, with the coronavirus uh, mm -hmm. gets um, uplifted a little bit, we're going to maybe. I feel. I mean, it's all like. It's all right. just like what we think. But from the conversations that I've had with other casting executives, is that for callbacks because it's only five people or so or 10 people or so that's when we'll probably you know once things are once things are a little bit more normal that's when we'll start um seeing people in the room to give them the notes and give them the direction because you could just play with them a little bit better yeah. but for but for prior to that the 40 actors we see the 60 actors we see the 110 in my case with this <laughs> film that i'm working on all self tapes all so right. i think that's something to like prepare and like make sure you have really good internet connection Right. <laughs> a very good internet connection. On that note, John did ask this question. I want to make sure I asked you because self-tapes before I go into my next one was, do you prefer the slate at the beginning or at the end of a, of a self-tape? Where What's the preference? So I think uh, like first and foremost, don't worry about it. As long as we have it, that's the best thing. Right. I personally like to have it in the beginning so that I can just see who, who right. the actor is. Because here's a really cool thing. If you have a character that is the complete opposite of who you are, the complete opposite of who you are as an individual at like in real life right. that you're playing right so your slate you you do your slate and you show us who you are hello my name is alan luna i'm five seven and i'm based in los angeles that's the first thing that's what i want to see uh name uh height where you are never give your age unless you're a minor never give your age you don't want to do that it's we're not allowed to even ask mm -hmm. so don't right. give your age to anyone right. um and then you are 21 just in case you're wondering <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> and then and then um as long as it's in there right so but then then you get into this character that you are and now you're like totally in the mode and i'm like whoa he went from that to this and i see that right away because the right. slate in the end the slate is the slates that are in the end they totally work because we have the slate that's all that matters but then you know seeing the slate after the character i don't know i just feel like there's there's more of an impact to see the contrast of who you are as the character compared to who you are as the real person john right um john as a person <laughs> doing the slate compared yeah. to the actor seeing that right away i'm like <laughs> I love, but to your point and i agree it's kind of like just like somebody would enter a room i think you're going to enter a room and say hello so that would be my personal recommendation as well so i love the way that you described that and i know in a little bit we're going to um, have to sign off 
But I wanted to make sure also that we talked about the importance of networking because you had also oh, yeah. mentioned that over and, and networking not being what some people might think, which is going to the cocktail party and just, you know, shaking hands oh, and that. It's more of a networking with the right organizations that are going to help build your career. Yes. So can you elaborate a little bit on that too? Yeah, absolutely. I can't, I can't emphasize more on, on the, the power um, that networking really, really brings. I mean, networking is extremely important. It's the reason why I think I am where I am in my career. Um, I, you know, it's, it's, it's also like, it's, I feel like also it's a little bit unfair and I apologize for, 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 you know, to the people who do have social anxiety, um, in advance for the people that do, you know, have, um, very real reasons to not be able to network. Um, cause I know it's, di I know it's very difficult. Um, but I think it's extremely important to network, um, because you never know who you're going to meet. Um, you know, there's, there's been times where, I go to the comedy store and I stay and I hang out and I talk to comedians and I talk to like Kirk Fox or, you know, uh, Mark Marin or Bobby Lee. Um, and we're just having conversations and, you know, every once in a while you exchange phone numbers and you're like, you know, this guy's cool. Let's keep in touch. Let's see if we become friends or not. You never know. Hey, Alan, is there any way yeah. that you can uh, let them know networking? Because a lot of my clients, younger clients, they think networking is going like to the IV or to Soho House. Which yeah. can be okay, but the club yeah. scene. And I'm like, well, I doubt people that are working or hanging out at a club on a Thursday night or Tuesday night. They're probably yeah. getting ready for tomorrow morning. Call tonight. For sure. For sure. For sure. Unless, unless, unless like the Ivy, which has a great gimlet, um, or the, um, <laughs> the Soho House. Yeah. Or the Soho House. I'm telling you, it's like the best. Yeah. Or the Soho House has industry specific event that you think you're going to benefit off of it doesn't really matter whether you go or not i mean that that's great you should go to that you should go to the ivy if there's an industry specific mixer but you're gonna get more out of being around entertainers than at a bar or a club where the agenda there is to get drunk and have fun and party i think right. that's one thing right you go to those places you go to you go to the nightclubs you go to these places the bars to drink, to to, net, uh, to network, but in a different way. You're not networking to enhance your career. What you're doing is, you're having fun. You're 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 unwinding. You're releasing, you know, your your stress in a different way, and that's cool. That's totally fun. I think everyone should do that. I think it's very healthy for you. But I think, you know, for me, one of the things that I really like to do, I really like to go to events that are hosted by Nalit. The National mm -hmm. Association of Latino Independent uh, Producers, uh, Nosotros, um, mm -hmm. here in Los Angeles, uh, big Latinx um, and Hispanic uh, community um, that does a lot for for our community. The National Hispanic Media Coalition. It's a group of of, of entertainment people, uh, professionals who empower um, Latinos and Hispanics and Native Americans. Um, for for the point is is to further enhance our lives and to to introduce each other i just went to the national hispanic media coalition um um gala um before this all went down um and i was rubbing shoulders with america ferrera and mm -hmm. i was rubbing shoulders with with you know the family of edward james olmos and stuff like that those are the people that i want to be around those are the people that i want to network with and get to know if i have the opportunity to do something like that over going to the ivy i'm gonna take it any day right. and also don't be afraid to spend your money on going to events like that that you know established writers established directors established producers established people are going to be at like i know every once in a while like there are events by like variety and like you know the academy awards and stuff like that and they offer the public like 40 dollars to come in you know you're, that's a 40 dollar investment on yourself you never know who you're going to meet um mm -hmm. i've met incredible producers incredible managers and agents and actors directors just by going to events like this that i think i'm going to be friends with for the rest of my life and you never know maybe one of them will hire me to be their casting director on a on a, on a film so why wouldn't i um well, i just think it's extremely important for sure and I agree with you. And on the note of networking, I have to tell you that as a uh, as a Latina, I am so proud of you and your career and all that you've accomplished already. And I really want to say thank you for your time because I think that talent like you being able to cast the amazing actors that I know are watching you live and with the great information that you're offering them really speaks to your pride and who you are and in reaching to help others grow with you. So thank you. Yeah, so on that note to close today, 
If there was a great piece of advice that you would give a talent to say, you know what, during this time frame, I would focus on this or something to help them advance their career mm -hmm. so that they could be noticed by someone like you, what would that be? Yeah. So I have a few things before I forget. Let me. Good. I love a few yeah. things. That's even better. So, so try to remind me before I forget. So I think one of the things is. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, there's a couple of things and hopefully I can touch base on all of them. Don't be discouraged. Right. Remember, don't be don't be discouraged because your friend is getting an audition that you're right for that you're not going in for. You know, sometimes we oversee that type of stuff because there are a lot of roles, but there are a lot of actors. And, um, you know, we you know, there's there's like right now, for example, I'm, I'm casting one role, one role that has over three thousand submissions, three thousand submissions for me myself to go through is a lot. And I don't want to oversaturate myself with all the work of sending each one their audition and you know sending the best self viewing i have to view every self tape i have to view every single one of them that's my job and that can take a long time um so it's not because you're not good it's just because that's the way it is don't be discouraged you know like there's a there's a quick thing that i, I wanted to touch base on but we didn't because we didn't have enough time I used, work, I used to work for the development team of a production company an international production company um and we would develop television shows and we would cast them and we would sell them like it was great we were vertically integrated but for every 100 television shows that we developed we sold one and you know it was sometimes very discouraging sometimes i felt like wow are we not creative do we suck at our job no it's not that you know what there's hundreds of others there's hundreds of other companies that are that are doing similar projects or there are hundreds of other companies that sold one you know sold and remember like projects cost millions of dollars to make sometimes so right. right now they don't have the budget for this type of project so maybe in six months maybe in a year so for me it was i had to find out i had to find a way to be like you know what don't be discouraged you're great you're good just continue honing on your craft continue continue you know uh practicing and continue learning continue um getting better with yourself i think right now in this time one of the things that i want to talk about it's important um, for you to master the self tapes. I just want to one more time master the self tapes. The techniques that I that I talked about um, being a little bit um, off the left or the right, and then and then opposite with your reader. Um, you want your you want if you have a camera, if you want your camera uh, wherever your camera is, you want to be just a little a few inches away from the camera. You want to be looking a few inches away from your camera, so hopefully your reader is right there, not looking directly into the camera unless it's a monologue you can get away with it with the monologue but mm -hmm. if it's a scene just try to master don't look at the camera it's a little bit uncomfortable just just go just go go over there um so master master self tapes um if you have a really good quality cell phone like the new iphones oh my god do you know how many people have have sent me self tapes in this this short film that i'm working with with the dreamworks people via their cell phone so many and they're beautiful so don't worry about you know buying a super expensive camera but if you do hey great that's great i i think it'll be a, it's not a terrible idea but if you can't afford it right now don't do it um another thing is um you know there is like one of the things that i said was there are a lot of actors but there are a lot of roles um but also you are creative you are an artist um you know you you have what it takes as well to create and produce your own content don't be afraid to do it dabble with it practice to write practice to create your own you know youtube channel to create your own characters your own um different types of personalities that you can do uh for social media or whatever that's not gonna hurt if you collaborate with other artists um you may learn something from them um right. so don't knock don't don't knock that down uh like even like being on TikTok and stuff it just makes you better it makes you a better artist Thank um you and creating your own content um and and also don't be afraid to say no to a project you know what i mean like if you are you know some if you don't want to be the cholo don't it's okay it's okay you will find another role you will find something else um but I'll, but if it's like netflix i would look good on your resume just saying um, <laughs> like if it's like hbo damn like that would look good on my resume but just don't be afraid to say no to it because if you don't really resonate with the character you don't have to do it um so i guess those are just some some pieces that i just thought about i mean 
I guess more will come, but that's that's well, pretty much it for now. We must well, bring you back. We have to bring you back. Yeah. There's so much to talk about. Yes. And I think the audience definitely wants you back because I've had so many great comments yes. um, that people have been sharing with us. And I have to tell you, to close today, what I really walk away mm -hmm. today from, and I really want our audience to know as well, is I hope you saw it today and we have seen through our travel and Vince's partnership as many times as possible is we're getting rid of this crab theory. We're actually helping each other succeed. And one of the biggest things that Alan spoke about was is the pie is really big. You do not have to fight over one little piece of pie. There's a huge one together. And if we all collaborate, help each other grow, look at where you could be in the future. Because just like Alan has grown his career, you can grow it too. The other aspect is not to get desperate. Because I think too many times I can only imagine good projects and only selling one and what that could feel like. But it built character so that way you can say yes to something else. And I will tell you, Alan, I really would love to have you back soon yes. um, because I feel that our audience could learn even many more things from you. Y completamente otra vez, es, es un orgullo tenerte aquí con nosotros. So and thank do, you. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias a ustedes. Dude, thank you for coming. I think you were very informative. I know a lot of my clients at Inclusion and uh, Level X got a lot of information that they needed this. X level, I'm sorry. It's okay. uh, and um, so, no, I uh, I think this is great. I think you're amazing. And I, I think you're going to be an, an up and coming big executive or casting director. And uh, dude, I'm so proud of you. I mean, I've known you for probably a couple of months, but what I've known about you, you're amazing. I love that you're on point. You give notes, you care. And and that goes a long way. Cause I mean, you know, I, I had an experience where he gave me some notes. I gave it to my client. My client went to network, but he was amazing. Cause in speaking to him, I could tell he cared, which was like, wow, this guy really wants my client to get the show. And I thought that was amazing. And I just want to say, thank you so much for being here. And we look forward to having you again, my man. Yeah, absolutely. If you guys, yeah, if you guys ever want to chat again, I, I, I would definitely make some time for you guys. I think what you guys are doing is amazing. And I just want to like emphasize on that one more time, but in like maybe a bigger scale to everyone that is watching this. I don't know how many people are going to watch this, but, um, you know, we, we, you know, I, I don't know, it's kind of tough to say, but I've never felt more at home than when I am with, you know, these different types of Latino organizations and Latino groups that are championing me, that are helping me, that are pushing me in my career. So do that as well to your fellow peers that need help. Don't be afraid to ask questions, but also answer the questions that you already know from people, from your fellow up and coming aspiring artists, because it's very important. And we are, we are an underrepresented group. It doesn't matter what like people say, we are. We are very marginalized. And you know, considering how much we consume television and film in comparison to how much we are represented, it's not even fair. Um, so we will get to that place eventually, but we need to support each other. We need to watch each other's stuff. Watch Henry the Fight. Watch Los Spookies on HBO. Watch Narcos. Watch Selena when it comes out. Watch these, watch these bilingual and Latinx films that are being produced. Watch them because if you watch them, more people will watch them. More people would want to buy stuff like that and more opportunities will be created for all of us. No, definitely. Well, I can make you a promise that any project you're on, please send it to us here at X Level. We will make sure to get all the masses on our side here cool. to make sure we're following and we'll do it on the first day it's streamed. So that way your ratings can go up as soon as possible. <laughs> you know, lo bueno que tenemos, so tenemos muchas familias, gracias a Dios. So that's yeah. good. Oh, so yeah. without further ado, thank you again. We appreciate you joining us on the Happy Empowerment Hour here with X Level and you, con mi hermano Vince and my new friend Alan. And we really hope that you make it a good day. You stay safe, stay motivated. And remember, your dreams are in front of you. So never forget that and always go and accomplish something else. Bye. Adios. Adios. Bye. Hasta luego.